five on KSBW TV8. As we mentioned, one of tonight's winners is uh, with us uh, from the 16th Congressional District and also with Mike Walter. Mike? Joe, as you mentioned, Leon Panetta has been projected a winner by the Associated Press. We've got some new figures in. He's uh, garnered about 90,000 of the votes as at present, and Patricia Smith Ramsey lagging far behind with 37,000 votes. And what's your feeling right now? You're going to be feeling pretty good. I mean, this has been a, a race uh, certainly tight in terms of money. You've had to spend quite a bit, and so has she. Well, obviously, feeling very pleased and very honored to uh, have the support of the 16th District again and, and the support of the voters in the 16th District. Uh, this is the fifth time I've been re-elected uh, in this district, and as I said, it's quite an honor, and I hope to continue to serve in the same manner these next two years. You know, four years ago, when Ronald Reagan was first elected, uh, there was a tidal wave. A lot of Democrats were thrown out of office. Do you think we'll see some of that tonight as well? Uh, we mentioned before going on the air that Walter Huddleston, uh, senator from Kentucky, a couple of noted prominent Democrats have fallen tonight. Well, there's no question that in some states there's been a strong coattail effect. Uh, I don't see, I don't think you'll see it as much in California races, but in, in other states where there just are much more independent voters. But in some states it does have a, a significant impact, and uh, I think we'll see it in Congress. We're going to be losing something like 14 or 15 projected seats right now. Uh, that will make a difference in terms of the House. The Senate will probably roughly stay about the same. I guess the hope is that regardless of the structure of the House or the Senate, that the President will take uh, the, the vote that he's gotten tonight and take it as a mandate to work together with the House and the Senate to try to solve some of the problems that are still facing the country. What happens to the Democratic Party after tonight's tidal wave? Well, I, I don't think there's any question, but uh, we've got to do a lot of regrouping. I think we've got to sit back and, and analyze just exactly what happened. My view is that, uh, frankly, while the issues are with us, and I think we speak well to the issues. Uh, the national image uh, that we portray from Washington, uh, and I think this was in part Mondale's problem, of uh, not speaking to the future, not carrying an image to the future, but carrying an image from the past. And I think that's hurt Democrats, it's hurt us nationally, and somehow that has to change because we've got to address no longer the fact that we were the party of the New Deal. We now have to become the party of the future. And we've got to do that with the issues that uh, need to be addressed. I heard Tip O'Neill tonight on one of the uh, networks say that this was the last time he was going to vote for himself, that he's going to be stepping aside after this next two-year term. Now that we've seen people like Mondale fall off to the side and, and Tip O'Neill's going to be moving out of the picture, that's the old guard. It's moving away. Who's going to be in the new guard and what kind, of, what kind of people, what kind of faces are we going to see in the Democratic Party in the future? Well, we've got a number of uh, new younger members that uh, are back there in the Congress. and. Uh, I think you're going to see them in the next uh, couple of years. You're going to have to see them. If the Democrats want to come back in the next two years, it seems to me extremely important that we get some of these voices up there so that the country understands that we have some, some very effective spokesmen on the issues that, uh, that need to be addressed. You've got people like Bill Bradley on the Senate side, Joe Biden, uh, obviously uh, Gary Hart will still be around. You've got some, some very attractive uh, senators that are being elected tonight. Al Gore from Tennessee is a very attractive uh, individual who's been in the House. On the House side, we have a number of uh, good people. Uh, Dick Gephardt, uh, I hope to uh, be uh, working uh, on the Budget Committee again and will be a spokesman on those issues. So I think we have a number of good people, and they're, they're the ones that America has to see. We can't just simply have either Tip O'Neill or Bobby Byrd uh, representing what the Democratic Party is all about. It doesn't work. This guy in the White House is too effective as a spokesman uh, to counter him with, uh, with that kind of, uh, of spokesman on the Democratic side. You mentioned earlier that you're going to lose a few seats, uh, the Democrats are. How effective is uh, President Reagan going to be in getting some of his legislative packages through with a, a, a different type of legislature this time around? Well, it will depend. I, I think if we lose about 14 or 15 seats, then it's likely that a coalition uh, that we saw back in 8081, a coalition of uh, so-called bull weevils on the Democratic side plus the Republicans, could provide the President with a working majority really in the House so that he could have a working majority on the House and the Senate and pretty much be able, at least within those first few months, the so-called honeymoon period, be able to get his packages through. Uh, my hope is that, regardless of party, we are able to work with the President in developing some approaches to the very real problems that are still there. You know, we've been through a lot of the imagery of an election, and I understand that both candidates uh, 
try to play images uh, as, as they can on, on national press. Tomorrow, there aren't going to be any images left. We've got to face the deficit issue. It's a $200 billion annual deficit. We're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to face a nuclear arms race. We can't simply continue to pump money into that. We're going to have to set some limitations. We're still going to have to face Central America, the problems of Central America, and what are we going to do about that? These are real issues that are still there tomorrow morning, and we're going to have to address them, both Republicans and Democrats alike. When does Ronald Reagan become a lame duck president and everyone starts sniping at him from both sides? Well, if, if he should fall on his face on, on one of these issues and uh, either fail to address the deficit issue or the economy begin to turn around as a result of that, then I think it won't be very long before support would, would move away from him very quickly. Uh, mandates like what a president has, has carried tonight in terms of a national mandate don't always solve all the problems just by themselves. I mean, we saw Lyndon Johnson get a significant mandate. We saw Richard Nixon get a significant mandate. And it was within a few months that uh, they were having a difficult time keeping their presidency alive. So it's not just the mandate alone. It's what you do as president in terms of addressing the issues and the challenges. That's the real test that will determine whether he will continue to have support in the next four years. We're going to have to wrap it up, but I do want to ask you this question. Look into your crystal ball and just throw out some names for 88, if you will, on the Democratic side and the Republican side. Who do you see on the top of the ticket? Well, no question, uh, Mario Como. Uh, and again, Joe Biden, Bill Bradley, those are the names that I think you're going to be seeing and hearing a lot more of in these next four years in terms of the Democratic side. On the Republican side, without question, Bush will be around, Jack Kemp. Those are the names you're going to hear on the Republican side. Okay, Leon, thank you very much for taking time Thanks to very much, Mike. join us tonight. We'll go back to Joe and Bev now. All right, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Congressman Panetta. Thank you very much. We will take a short break now, then we'll turn with more of Decision 84.